U.S. officials say Russia will begin air and naval exercises within the coming weeks, and this is the first time that Russia has held air and naval maneuvers in the Caribbean since 2019. The exercises are expected to last all summer, culminating in a worldwide naval exercise in the fall. CBS News national security correspondent David Martin joins us now from the Pentagon. David, first of all, what do we know about these exercises, where they're taking place, what nations are involved? Well, the Cuban government has just announced that uh, four Russian warships will uh, arrive in Havana on June 12th next week for a, a five-day port visit, so we can uh, expect these exercises to begin uh, by the end of this month. And in addition to those, uh, those four R Russian naval ships, we can expect to see Russian long-range uh, bombers patrolling down the East Coast. Now, uh, Russian ships have made port calls in Cuba before, and Russian long-range bombers have flown down the East Coast before. What makes this noteworthy is that it is the first time in five years that uh, Russia has done uh, both at the same time. You know, uh, David, as people are learning about this news, some folks are making a comparison to Kennedy, to the sphere of influence with uh, Russian missiles uh, in Cuba, now Russian naval exercises and military exercises. Talk to us about the timing of these exercises and uh, to that point, whether it poses any threat to the U.S. Well, U.S. officials say that on one level, this is simply the summer uh, exercise uh, season kicking off, uh, but uh, they also believe that this is partly uh, a show of displeasure by uh, Putin for uh, American support of Ukraine and for all the uh, NATO exercises that have um, been going on in in Europe. Um, this uh, presence of, of four uh, Russian ships in the Caribbean off the east coast of the United States just pales in comparison to the size of the uh, exercises the U.S. military has been conducting with its NATO allies uh, in Europe. So this is not uh, considered in any way a direct threat mm -hmm. to the United States. Uh, David, <clears throat> do we expect that the Biden administration will respond in any way to these exercises? Well, you can be sure that uh, the U.S. military is going to be tracking this exercise very closely, uh, sending up jet fighters to intercept uh, the long-range uh, bombers and shadowing uh, those ships, in particular the, uh, the submarine. I just checked, and it turns out that right now in the, uh, in the Caribbean, uh, the only thing the U.S. Navy has there are uh, autonomous sail drones. But uh, the east coast of the United States is just uh, bristling with air bases and, and naval bases, and uh, the U.S. could uh, uh, surge uh, ships and aircraft out if in this uh, exercise and somehow in some way turn threatening. Uh, David Martin at the Pentagon for us. Thanks, David. In a rare event, Russian President Vladimir Putin took questions from an international group of journalists. Russia's war with Ukraine dominated the conversation. When asked what it would take to end the conflict, he said that the West needs to stop supplying weapons and the hostilities would end in two to three months. Putin claims that Russia could do the same by sending its own weapons to places within striking distance of Western targets. He was also asked if he would resort to using nuclear weapons. We have our nuclear doctrine. Look at what is written there. If somebody's action will threaten our sovereignty and territorial integrity, we consider it possible to use all means at our disposal. President Biden plans to meet with Ukraine's president this week, and as tensions over Ukraine intensify, Russia is sending warships to the Caribbean for naval and air drills. Now let's take a look at the U.S. It has a new problem on its hands. Russia has now officially called the United States an enemy nation. This came from the Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov. Let me read out the translation of what he said. And we are an enemy country for them, much like they are for us. Again, that was the Kremlin spokesperson, and this is the first time he said enemy.
because it's not something to be said lightly. Now, you know that Washington and Moscow have never seen eye to eye. They've been on opposite sides in a number of conflicts, most recently in Ukraine. But through two years of the Ukraine war, Moscow went out of its way to avoid calling the U.S. an enemy state. Just look at Peskov again. Barely three months ago, he said that the U.S. was not the enemy, that Russia did not have any anti-American sentiments. But that has changed now. Why? Perhaps because of last week's escalation. Last week, the United States gave Ukraine a green light to strike Russian territory using American weapons. Ukraine has already begun doing so. They're using American weapons to strike inside Russia, and Russia is furious. Putin says Ukraine is striking Russian territory with the help of Western specialists. The missile strikes against Russia are done by the Western specialists. We have no illusions about that. What must we do in response? First of all, we will improve our air defense systems to destroy the missiles. Secondly, we think that if someone thinks it is possible to supply such weapons to a combat zone to strike at our territory and create problems for us, why do we not have the right to supply our weapons of the same class to those regions of the world where there will be strikes on the sensitive facilities of those countries that are doing this against Russia? You heard what he said. Basically, Putin has threatened to turn the tables to send Russian weapons to Western enemies long-range weapons that could strike sensitive facilities in the West. And this means that Western enemies could get the ability to strike them at will. It would be a security nightmare for the Western nations that are helping Ukraine. In the end, if we see that these countries become involved in a war against us, what they are doing makes them directly involved in a war against the Russian Federation, we reserve the right to act the same way. Overall, it leads to some serious problems. That was Putin's threat. But he isn't just content with that. He's also going for a show of force. Russia is sending combat vessels to the Caribbean Sea, to America's doorstep. Russia will participate in naval exercises in the Caribbean, along with Cuba and possibly Venezuela. Russian aircraft may also be deployed in the region and won't stop there. from Russia, Russian nuclear-powered submarine Kazan and Frigate Admiral Garchkov are practicing the use of high-precision weapons in the Atlantic Ocean. The drills involve hitting targets from a distance of more than 600 kilometers and follow an exercise in anti-aircraft fire. Remember, these nuclear sub Kazan and Frigate Admiral Garchkov are due to arrive in Cuba next week. Cuban officials state that none of the Russian Navy vessels headed towards the Caribbean will be carrying nuclear weapons in an apparent effort to reduce tensions between Moscow and Washington. Both the Kazan and the Admiral Garchkov are equipped with vertical launch system silos that can accommodate caliber long-range cruise missiles as well as Onyx supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles. Admiral Garchkov is the first Russian Navy warship to operation or to operate and deploy the new Zircon hypersonic cruise missiles. The Pentagon is closely watching the movements of this Russian fleet. Once again, the Pentagon has announced that it is watching this uh, movement of the Russian fleet where Russian nuclear-powered submarine Kazan and Frigate Admiral Garchkov are practicing the use of high-precision weapons in the Atlantic Ocean. The drills involve hitting targets from a distance of more than 600 kilometers and follow an exercise in anti-aircraft fire. Remember, these nuclear sub Kazan and Frigate Admiral Garchkov are due to arrive in Cuba next week. A Russian nuclear armed submarine is off the coast of Florida, guys. And we do have a U.S. Navy PA Poseidon flying over top, which is one of our sub hunters. 
The nuclear submarine is off of the coast of Florida, Cape Canaveral, where they launched SpaceX and NASA from, is right here. And guys, Miami Beach is right down here. That sub is right there. Now, the freaky part was, I was about to make a video referencing a sub on the coastline, but it was actually Black Ops 6. The issue is, this isn't a game. This is real life. Russia has a nuclear armed submarine near our coastline and due to the rising tensions because they said we are now an enemy of the state We're gonna have an air Cuban missile crisis guys and no like this this is legit You know Russian military exercise in the Caribbean. Here's what to expect We need you know, this is this is this is exactly the issue that we don't need to happen this year or the next coming years, please.